So uh, we, we looked at uh, a subset of patients from two uh, clinical trials where, where patients with dyslipidemia had received uh, a niacin formulation that was an extended release formulation in combination uh, with the drug loropaprant, which inhibits the niacin-induced prostaglandin-mediated flush. And what we found in looking at the subgroup of patients in, in uh, two studies that we pulled together uh, was uh, if we looked at the patients who had uh, an estimated GFR uh, of 30 to 59, we had 261 uh, such patients. Um, 177 uh, received the ER niacin and loropaprant combination, 84 received placebo, uh, when followed out uh, for 24 weeks with serial measurement of their phosphorus at 4, 8, 12, uh, 18, and 24 weeks, uh, there was a sustained uh, reduction in serum phosphorus uh, of about 0.4 milligrams per deciliter uh, from, from, their, from their baseline mean uh, of about three and a half. And uh, this, this effect, again, peaked at about 8 to 12 weeks and then it was sustained through the full 24 weeks. Now, what we feel about these findings is that, uh, first of all, we're demonstrating that uh, this kind of mild uh, uh, increase in phosphorus, or even redu reducing phosphorus within the normal range in patients with stage 3 CKD can be achieved with once a day dose. This is a big advantage over standard binder therapy, which requires thrice daily dosing uh, with many more grams of, of binder that's given uh, and often fails to lower phosphorus in this particular range. So we think the implications are, of our findings are twofold that if the hypothesis that phosphorus lowering in stage 3 to 4 CKD patients, uh, even if they have a relatively normal phosphorus, might contribute to reduction of cardiovascular disease. Uh, outcomes, niacin would probably be the preferred therapy, uh, and uh, it would it, it would be a better way to test this hypothesis that such treatment might reduce uh, cardiovascular disease and maybe real disease progression in patients with stage three to four CKD.